Well, good morning. What I want to talk about today is how we live full. And you could say like how to live the abundant life, how to live fulfilled. There's all different ways of, uh, of, of expressing it. But the point is this. We were designed to live full of God. I've been talking about surrendered love, you know, this like emptied out life. But the end goal is not to be empty, but to be full. In the book of Acts, we read they only chose leaders who were full. We are looking to be people who are full of God. But the question is, how? How do we live full of the Holy Spirit? And so I want to leave that question with you for a minute. Have a conversation with one another. How do we live full of the Holy Spirit? What does it look like to live full of the Holy Spirit? Have a conversation around that theme. One minute. Go for it. Well, how did you do? Like, what did you come up with? Well, my answer is the Sunday school answer. It's always Jesus. Jesus is the way. And what we see in the life of Jesus is how he lived full. And so what I want you to do right now is turn with me in your Bibles to uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter three. And we're going to read verses 21 and 22. And this is how Jesus starts his ministry and actually how Christian life starts for anyone who wants to follow the way of Jesus. Luke chapter 3 verses 21 and 22. Father, speak to us this morning. It says this, Now when all the people were baptised, and when Jesus also had been baptised and was praying, the heavens were opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you... I am well pleased. So this is Jesus being full. But what I want you to see is it, it first starts when he's he's committed the act of water baptism. Now, water baptism is the, is the way Christian life begins. It is this act of total surrender. It, it symbolizes actually our death, a death to self, death to our own way an immersion in the way of God. So it's this act of surrender. The, the point being that you can't be full unless you've first been empty. And so we, we emptied out. And whilst that's like a life process, like a daily process, you know, emptying ourselves before the Lord, being filled again, it's how the Christian life begins. You cannot Make the decision to become a Christian until you first said, God, I give it all up. <laughs> I, I lay it all down your way, not my way. That's how the Christian life begins. So Jesus has this act of emptying himself before the Father. And, and then what we see happens next is that the Spirit comes. And what I really want you to see, and this is what I really want us to understand today, is like key point. When the Spirit comes, there's a voice and there are words. Let's just read it again. Uh, the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus in bodily form like a dove and a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. So th this is what I want us to see from Jesus' experience that when the Spirit comes, normally there are words. There's a voice and there are words. There's a, there's a communication 
that's going on. We're not just being filled with a with a, a feeling or an experience. It's a person who communicates that comes. And normally there are words. Listen to Jesus talking in John's Gospel, chapter six, verse 63. He's, Jesus said this. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit. And life. So, so what God is saying there, what Jesus is saying there is, is that actually when my spirit comes, my spirit comes, he, I am the word of God. He, I speak, I communicate. Uh, and and I, I want to kind of like press it a little bit further on, on you, this, this idea that actually if we receive the words of God, we are filled with God. If we receive the words of God, we are filled with God. If we reject the words of God, then we, we can't be filled with God. Like God and his, his words, like that's how he expresses himself. So if we want to be filled with the words, if we want to be filled with the spirit, like we've got to be like looking to hear. Like listening is probably the greatest act of surrender. I'll come back to that. But like before I say that, let me just clarify this again from scripture this is acts chapter 10 verse 44 now you can take time read the whole of, the, of acts chapter 10 how god speaks to peter tells him to go to a particular household goes to that household and then peter speaks the words of the gospel the good news of jesus and as he's speaking the words they get filled let me read this, this is this is acts 10 verse 44 while Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. Did you get that? The Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And, and really, this is, this is what I want us to get today. Listening to someone attentively is probably the greatest act of surrender that, that we can do do right and the way of Jesus as hopefully you're picking up is the way of surrendered love that's who God is and to listen to someone is possibly one of the greatest acts of surrender you know like Jesus said like if you keep my words then you love me <laughs> you know it, this is the act of surrender and so if we want to be filled with God we want to be like surrendering to God so we can be filled with God the, the primary act really is to position ourselves to listen to God. Now, primarily, this means listening to scripture, right? Like, and I know some of you are like super academic, love to read. Some of you aren't. Can I encourage you just get hold of an audio copy of the Bible, listen to it, put it in your headphones, play it in the car. You know, you don't necessarily need to be some academic reader. It's about listening to the words of scripture. 2 Timothy verse, uh, chapter 3 verse 16, it says that all scripture is God breathed. In other words, when you're, when you're listening to the words of scripture, you're breathing in the breath of God. You're being filled. It, it's spiritual. His words are spirit and life. So, so the primary way we, we position to listen is we, is we just listen to the words of scripture. I've got friends who, who are evangelicals, love the scripture and they do not believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They don't believe in the gifts of the spirit. And sometimes these guys are more prophetic than they realize. Like they, I find them saying stuff and I'm like, do you not recognize that's the spirit of God? That's prophetic because they've developed a lifestyle of really meditating on scripture, listening to that. And without them realizing the spirit's filling them and they end up being highly prophetic, highly discerning, you know, really cooperating with the spirit in ways that, that that doesn't quite match their theology. I remember one guy saying to me, look, John, I keep getting these dreams and, the, and then what I dream happens. But I don't believe that, <laughs> you know, because this guy is just diligent to, to, to breathe in the words of God. So primarily we listen to God by listening to scripture, but also it, it, it includes the, the listening to God speaking, because just like he spoke to my friend through dreams, God speaks and communicates personally to us and if, if we don't have an expectation of that oftentimes we won't know how to apply uh, 
the, the, the written word of God. We need the written word of God so we can weigh the subjective things that are coming into our imagination when we pray and say, well, hang on, does this fit with scripture? Uh, but we also need the subjective so we can know how to apply the, the scripture in our lives, in our modern context, how we're living today. So listening both to scripture and just taking time, God, what do you want to say to me? See what drops into our imagination. This, this, these practices of listening are how we are filled. Now, there are other ways that God speaks. I, I, I might touch on that in a moment. Before I do, I want to say this. The, the manner of the way in which we listen to God, whether it's through scripture or, or, or through the imagination as we're just in that posture of God, what do you want to say to me? It, it is active listening and it's active listening in order to obey God. Both in the Greek and the Hebrew, the word for listen and hear are the same as the word to obey. Like Jesus, Matthew 28, he said, like, teach them to obey everything I've taught you. You know, not just teach them everything I've taught you. And, and so we're looking like, how can I apply what I'm hearing? How can I live this out? How can I practice what I just heard? You know, what does this mean in terms of like doing something with it? In, in fact, in some ways, when we read the scripture without a heart to obey, we inoculate ourselves against the power of God and against the power of his word. It'd be like eating food, vomiting it up. It, it makes no difference in us unless we digest it to a place where it becomes muscle in us. And the scripture, the words of God become muscle in us when we apply them, when we do something with it. So we're listening actively. That's how we become full. So this active listening like asking God really like how do I apply this how do you want me to live this out is is really really key and and I I want to say this just as with with a person when you're looking to actively listening to them you're listening to their words but you're also watching all the other ways they communicate like they might be saying I love you I really love you but we can hear by the tone of the voice, like, actually, you're communicating something else. It sounds like love with the words, but depression with your voice. Like, tell me about that. You, you kind of press in or, you know, if they, if, they, if, they look, if they're saying it in a really angry way, you're like, well, you know, is there something else going on there? We, we listen not just to what's coming out of their mouth, but also to their, their, their face, their, their kind of tone of voice, the, the way they move their arms. And in the same way, if we want to actively listen, listen to God... It, it's really about giving our whole attention over the, the act of, of active listening that leads to us being filled with God is a little bit like being a waiter. You know, the scripture talks about waiting on the Lord. And if you've ever seen like a, a waiter in a really nice restaurant, they're, they're, they're stood almost invisible, but they're watching and they're watching to see if there's any signal, any head turn from from one of the guests and then they'll come in and they'll say, yes, sir. Yes, madam. Anything you need? And they'll be looking to act, to, to do. They're, they're sort of listening attentively. So before the, the, the guest has to say, oh, waiter, or even say a word, just by a gesture, the waiter's ready. And, and that's the kind of attitude we need to have when we're, we're listening to God. You know, we're, we're looking at the scripture. We're listening to his voice. And we're, we're like fully giving our attention over to God. Um, and, and like, of course, just as an, a waiter is looking for the gesture, clearly God does not just speak through the, the scripture or, or our imagination. He can like in this passage, he can come in a physical form like a dove, you know, or, and sometimes God does speak through the creation. You know, like you've heard my weird stories of the coincidences of number plates and whatever else. He can speak through all of that. Uh, he can speak it through dreams, like I mentioned. He can speak through these crazy coincidences. He can speak through uh, like physical weather and all, all kinds of ways that he communicates. But we miss it unless we're living these lives of attention, like where we're giving attention to, to, to actively listen and respond to the voice of God. And if you think of any time that you've been full of the spirit, normally it will have been in an environment where you were giving attention to God, either in a time of worship, like you're singing and singing and you just you're beginning to experience God or or you're sitting before him in prayer or you're studying the scripture or someone's teaching like in that Acts 10 passage where Peter's teaching. 
Um, th there's an attention that's been given to receive the life giving word of God into us. Personally, like I really love to walk with God like that really helps me like get into a, a posture of listening. But I struggle to do it because it takes up time and I like to be productive. You know, I like to like do stuff that gets results. And I was walking with God today and he was challenging me. He said, John, like, don't you understand this communion with me, being alone with me is a creative act. It produces because as you listen to me like this, you're receiving my words into your heart and out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. You will produce when your heart is full. But if your heart isn't full of me, actually all you're doing is building empty scaffolding. And I can't dwell in empty scaffolding. That's what he said to me. He wants to build a house for his people to dwell in. And, and so I recognize that for me, I've got to take that time out to listen so my heart can be filled. So out of that overflow of my heart, I can be productive in a, in a really in the way that God wants to be productive. So I want to land with this. I'm going to give you another minute and I just want you to have a think. How can you practice active listening on a daily basis? How can you increase your time of active listening? One minute. Go for it. Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You are so, so.